hello friends uh, welcome back to the lecture series on congenital anomalies of the kidney and the urinary tract someone who is watching this video for the first time should understand that i have already uploaded the videos on basics which is embryology and then the radiology aspect it will be better or easy to understand this video if you have already gone through those two video lectures now as we are discussing the different uh, anomalies let's begin our discussion with, by focusing on just the cystic diseases of the kidney the renal cystic dysplasia result from an interference with a normal ampullary activity that leads to abnormal metanephric differentiation when there is inhibition of the ampullary activity occurring at very early stage only few collecting ducts have been formed by then and hence only few nephrons develop the kidney becomes a cluster of cells with little or no residual parenchyma and the ureters absent or atratic the kidneys could be of normal size they could be larger than normal as in mcdk that is multicystic dysplastic kidneys or markedly shrunken as in hypodysplastic kidney why it happens so it may be the consequence of an either an intrinsic which is a malformation or an extrinsic which is a disruption defect in the organogenesis when i say intrinsic defect it is either a single gene mutation a chromosomal aberration or a combination of genetic and environmental factors which becomes multifactorial when extrinsic it could be because of the teratogenic chemicals that have been exposed during pregnancy metabolic abnormalities or infection first we will discuss about multicystic dysplastic kidneys also abbreviated as mcdk there is essentially no functioning kidney parenchyma on an ultrasound it appears as bunch of grapes it can be detected by ultrasound done in the antenatal period again there is no parenchyma between the cysts so when you do a mag 3 scan which is a functional scan you will see only the normal kidney and the mcdk kidney will not be lighting up as demonstrated in this mag 3 scan only the normal kidney is seen and the mcdk kidney is not visible there is it can be unilateral or bilateral and when it is unilateral the contralateral side could be associated with other anomalies most common being reflux and hence it is mandatory to perform vcug to rule out a reflux because these kids have only one functioning kidney and you don't want to lose that with any sort of infection so you make every effort to preserve it so it is one of the indication to treat reflux and this is the ultrasound appearance where you see just a bunch of cysts here with no parenchyma in the in between the cysts it is one of the most common cause of abdominal mass in infancy and most common type of bilateral cystic disease in newborns as i said it could be unilateral or bilateral unilateral is more common when it is there the normal kidney will undergo compensatory hypertrophy and if you don't hence if you don't see a hypertrophy in the normal kidney it should raise concerns for that kidney whether it is normal or not bilateral then kids will have renal insufficiency insufficiency right at the birth and sometimes they could not even make it and they just die uh, intrauterine what's the management for these patients as i said one you should always do vcug to rule out a reflux in the contralateral normal kidney and if so treat it with prophylactic antibiotics and surgically if it does not disappear 
next you monitor them with serial ultrasounds every six months and they involute over a period of time 33 percent by the age of two years 47 percent by the age of five years and 59 percent by the age of 10 years surgical removal is indicated in cases when there is associated proteinuria or hypertension and there is no increased risk of tumor genesis in these cysts another disease which is cystic renal dysplasia now i don't want you to get confused between this and the disease we just explained which is mcdk they both are different entities and you will learn the differences soon as i go through this slide so cystic renal dysplasia or crd is bilateral whereas mcdk was unilateral it usually differs in etiology from mcdk there is obstruction of the broader outlet kidneys will retain a reniform shape they have more parenchyma than classic mcdk and hence when you do a mag3 scan you will see that kidney will light up the cystic kidney will light up and that's how you can differentiate whether this is mcdk or crd again kidneys are very highly echogenic on ultrasound and the cyst size is usually smaller than mcdk Here is the ultrasound differentiating between the two different diseases. On your left hand side is the MCDK with large cysts, no normal parenchyma or no parenchyma I should say. On the other hand you see the small cysts and there is parenchyma that is very, very easily visible. So that's how you differentiate MCDK from CRD. All right, the next cystic disease, which is medullary sponge kidney, also known as precalicial canalicular ectasia. If you can remember, you have a great memory. There is tubular dilatation of the collecting ducts and the cyst formation is confined to the medullary pyramids, especially inner and the papillary portion. They are not hereditary, but they can sometime and when they do they have an autosomal dominant inheritance kidneys appear to be normal most of the time or slightly enlarged in some cases again they are bilateral as i say the cysts are located more in the medullary area and dilated ducts communicate proximally by a construction and hence you would see there will be some obstruction to the normal flow that leads to precipitation of the crystals and the stone formation and hence a nephrocalcinosis is a common finding in medullary spawn kidney. This calculi formation leading to obstruction, rupture of the tubule, inflammatory cells come in followed by fibrosis and that's how they end up with damage in the future. Diagnosis is by doing excretory urography which has two different phases uh, initially a dilated collecting ducts and later as well um, nephrocalcinosis as I said is where there is deposition of the calcium slot, uh, salts uh, in clusters fanning away from the calyx and it's a very classic appearance that you see. USG that is ultrasound and CT scan can help you but they are not very diagnostic and you need excretory urography to diagnose. Typically you know it may go undetected and asymptomatic and it has a benign course and hence nobody may detect it unless they go ultrasound or any sort of imaging for any other reason or sometimes they can present as microscopic hematuria because the calculi and when you look at the calcium stones that form mostly it is calcium oxalate and phosphate you can also have incomplete distal renal tubular acidosis and hence they can develop a non-gapped metabolic acidosis there is no specific treatment for uh, medullary sponge kidney usually benign as i said without any significant morbidity going into developing ckd and esrd rest all the treatment is for stone prevention and uti Next is uh, ARPKD or Autosomal Recessive Polycystic Kidney Disease. The responsible gene is PKD1 gene.
the kidneys are large and echoic <clears throat> there is associated congenital fi hepatic fibrosis and this is more common when ARPKD presents in the later part of the life again it can be seen in fetal life infantile juvenile or adult one of the epidemiological study that was done revealed like one third of the cases were seen to develop this disease in fetal and infantile period one third in juvenile and one third as an adult <clears throat> younger patients um, younger the age, more in involvement and older the age, as I said, will have um, liver involvement. Uh, but there could be also associated, uh, sorry, here I meant to write more, see, yeah, this is correct. Younger the age, more renal involvement with some lung involvement as well. And in the later age, there is more liver involvement. And you know why this lung involvement? Because if they are not making many urine, water sequence, hypoplasia of the lungs. This is the ultrasound appearance. You could see that they are highly echogenic and cysts are very small. Sometimes you may not be even able to make those cysts, but this is how it appears. And what is the major calm, uh, problem with ARPKD? Since the cysts are so small, there is a continuation or communication between the collecting and the distal nephron. And hence the urine flow is not obstructed and they will continue to make urine but the problem is these kidneys are so huge that they have a mechanical effect on the abdominal cavity and the newborn will have respiratory distress and that will be the indication to treat surgically even though they will have a normal cm creatinine and the kidneys are able to do their job but because of the humongous size from the disease they need to be taken care of here is the ultrasound appearance and you could see the echogenic kidneys maybe not very clearly the cysts but you could see the abdomen is just filled with the kidneys and this is the KUB where you could see a round distended abdomen with nothing because it can the kidneys are not seen on the x-ray and this is a gross specimen of um, ARPKD kidneys and you could see the small cysts and you surgically take them out maybe just take one out leave the other one in so that they can have the renal function as well otherwise you need to start them on renal replacement therapy with hemodialysis peritoneal dialysis and eventually transplant the other one in the same spectrum is the autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease i'm not going to go into details about these the only thing is because this in itself is a topic for discussion and a lot of points to learn for adpkd but since i'm going through the cystic disease and it can be seen in kids as well i'll just briefly mention about it um in the major difference between the adpkd and the arpkd is that in adpkd there will be various other manifestations as well like cysts in the liver pancreas manual vesicles they have associated cerebral aneurysms and family history is very important if someone has a history of a sudden stroke in the family then it qualifies for screening of all the polycystic kidney disease patients for any aneurysms with ct angio hernias diverticulosis mitral valve prolapse the cysts continue to grow in size and number over the period of time and then eventually they become end stage renal disease needing dialysis and here is the gross specimen which tells you the differences between the ADPKD and the ARPKD and you could see the kidneys have shrunken but there are multiple cysts here the kidneys are so big and the cysts are very small Some other cystic kidney diseases include glomerulocystic cortical cyst with various syndromes such as tuberous sclerosis. So you can remember one cystic disease associated with tuberous sclerosis is glomerulocystic cortical cyst disease. 
um, a cystic disease of the kidney associated with maturity onset diabetes is hepatocyte nuclear factor 1 beta related cystic disease and then nephronophthysis nephronophthysis has probably so many different diseases in itself which is tough for me to go through but if you remember these three different cystic diseases apart from the one which I just discussed which include MCDK, renal cystic CRD, cystic renal dysplasias, medullary sponge kidney, uh, autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease and autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. Thank you.